So this is our research and development facility, or our worm farm, as we can call it. As a rule, farmers aren't the squeamish sort. But Sam Glickstein, founder of the Baltimore-based business Biotrophics and its partner company, Instar Farm, takes that to a whole new level. And yes, I have, I have tasted them before. They don't taste bad. They taste like whole wheat bread. And if you were to add some, you know, nacho cheese on them, then they would taste like nacho cheese. So they're a good carrier of flavor. Sam treats these mealworms as livestock. But aside from the taste test, which he considers a one-time rite of passage, they're not for human consumption. The goal is to speed up the adoption of insects as a primary protein source in, in animal feeds as a protein source for agriculture because they don't use a lot of resources. They don't use a lot of water. They don't use a lot of land. On top of that, they're also a very high quality protein, which is actually probably most important. Biotrophics is focused on developing the best strains of insects for the job through genetic editing. If all goes as planned, the separate but complementary Instar farm will mass produce them. Oh, okay, so you use them as broodstock? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Sam's mentor, Christopher Loeb, is focused on helping Sam take his fledgling businesses from promising to profitable. What do you think the fastest is the best way to make it efficient in terms of production? Genetics. There are, let's say, a, a ton of good ideas, but good ideas don't make money. Great business plans do, and great teams. Any reason to look at the um, selection? Chris works with an Eastern Shore initiative called the F3 Tech Accelerator. Part of the Eastern Shore Entrepreneurship Center, F3 Tech aims to bring innovation to two of the shore's long-standing industries, seafood and agriculture. The need on the Eastern Shore originally came from the interest to promote more technology use within farming, as a lot of the farms have let's say, lost revenues and profitability over the years. Farmers were looking for new ways and new products to develop but didn't have access necessarily to the marketplace or the consumers who were at the forefront of either developing new technology or new products to offer them. And as the planet's population grows, agriculture and aquaculture must produce more food with fewer resources. That means it's even more important to connect farmers with innovators like Sam. The challenge that I see is that F3 Tech is trying to solve is to really bring these communities together of the, you know, urban entrepreneurial business ideas where generally they develop and then the resources and the know-how of the farmers. Speaking of resources. The other thing we're doing is trying to figure out different feeds. What's the best way to nourish a growing worm? Sam's testing out everything from food scraps like banana peels to spent grain from breweries to coffee grounds. Much of it comes free of charge from area businesses just looking to get rid of it. You can see we've added vegetable scrap and they actually go pretty crazy for them. You'll see, oh, here's, here's one that's been kind of demolished by them. These were all huge pieces originally. And once the feed is gone, it's not just the worms themselves that could be worth marketing. All this sandy material is the, it's called insect frass. It's essentially, it's their waste. And I did have it analyzed and it's actually either on par or in most cases actually superior to worm castings as a fertilizer. And I've gotten several calls actually from some farmers in Maryland and also Delaware, Pennsylvania to see if I had significant quantities to sell them. He doesn't yet. But it's innovation like this, small in size perhaps, but potentially large in scope, that F3 Tech is betting will lead the way to the future of agriculture. <laughs>